I want to talk to everybody today about the man in the tombs. The man with 2,000 demons that called themselves legion. The naked man. The man that was ostracized by those around him. The man that was not welcomed in the city. The man that was crazy. The man that, if he were around today, would be put into psychiatry, some psychiatric facility. He'd be put into psychiatric care. Because they're the only ones that do. Those that want to medicate you. Well, I got better medication. The Father's Son. His name is Jesus. Jesus comes along. And these demons that are legion actually scared as can be of the one that was sent from the Father. They asked permission not to just go into the abyss. They didn't want this. They were scared of the emptiness. They would rather go into the swine, the pigs which is the economy of the nearby city. And Jesus actually gives them permission. And it's to teach you and I a lesson. Those pigs, when they have the demons, they throw themselves off a cliff. They kill themselves. They commit suicide. That's why I believe, not just from the FFA, that swine are smarter than we are. You see, when we have demons, we go around being demonic, and we're okay with this, but not the pigs. And as humans, we're not okay when things are taken away financially, fiscally. When things are taken away financially, and economically, we become very afraid, much like those demons. Because on money, we put in God we trust, very small, so that we can barely read it. Because it's actually in that piece of paper or that coin that we trust. Which one are you? Are you the one that's going to trust Jesus, or are you going to be the one that trusts money? Because when the leaders founders of this city come over and they see what Jesus has done, this wonderful miracle. He saved a life. He transformed a man. He healed him. When they see this, they become afraid. This key factor in this short sermon is fear. They became very afraid. They just lost half the economy of their city by losing 2,000 pigs. So what did they do? They order Jesus to leave. And what does Jesus do? He obliges them because Jesus is not going to stay somewhere that he is not wanted. How badly do you want Jesus? Or how badly do you want your wallet full? I tell you, a wallet full of money never healed me. Jesus did. A wallet full of money gave me something that was temporary, maybe a, a pill or a, a pleasure. But nothing provides more pleasure than a marriage to Jesus Christ. Even your earthly marriage is better when you invite Jesus into the bedroom, when you invite Jesus into your oneship, into your one flesh. I remember eating a meal after the Holy Spirit had filled me in a way that healed me. And thinking to myself, wow, even food is better with Jesus. And maybe some of you are questioning, what do you mean with Jesus? 
What I mean is I obey the two commands, the two great commands that Jesus said, and by obeying these two commands, I have fulfilled the law of Moses. Uh, the law is very important, but if I do these two things, I will be abiding by the law as best I can. First, I love the Lord my God with all my heart, mind, and soul. That means I'm praying, praising, worshiping, fellowshipping, and being of service. Number two, I love one another. Another translation, I love my neighbor as myself. And how do I do this? The same ingredients. Prayer, praise, fellowship, worship, and service. So are you going to be the ones that run off Jesus? Because maybe he messed with your finances. Maybe he asked you to sell everything and follow him. And that wasn't something possible. Something that was worth doing for you. I've never known Jesus better than when I had him. To love this world is to hate him. And when I say this world, I don't mean the people in it. I mean the pleasures in it. Those sinful pleasures to break the law. This is my short sermon. I love you guys. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Love me back. But just keep this message in your heart for whenever it's needed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.